2014 proposed zoning uh, ordinance amendments public hearing amendments to the town zoning ordinance articles as follow one amendment amend article one general section 1.6 definitions to add a the, the definition of impervious surface two amend article four dimensional requirements section 4.8 <coughs> to reduce the maximum permitted amount of impervious sealed surface indicated as a percentage for the zoning districts to set forth new standards for impervious surface coverage for redevelopment. The new percentage and standards will be outlined in a footnote to the dimensional requirement table. Mm -hmm. um, should we take these one at a time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. And you James. do have the latest yes. version. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, let me ask a quick question. If there's no stipulated date in here. Am I to assume that if this passes uh, at the uh, vote in March, that it would become effective immediately, or do you need yes. to put some kind of a date on it? No, effective immediately. It would be effective immediately. Does it go into effect now as no, soon as we yeah. put it on the ballot? No, as soon as it's well, it, yeah. posted, yeah. <laughs> yeah, For, okay. Temporary. Temporary. But once the vote is final, then it's locked in. Right. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, my goodness, look at that. <laughs> come back, come back. Nathan did it. <laughs> nice going, Nathan. Yeah, you don't have the right karma today, Nathan. <laughs> uh oh. It's making noise. <coughs> That's, noise. A good, That's a good <laughs> sign. Oh. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> I'd say hold it for a second. I'd say hold it too, yeah. I see us buying more technology. Evidently. <laughs> Uh, we have a different color oh, light, though. Something blinking. Yeah, we have different went from color green light. to red. Is your computer still so quick? Given yeah. now. Now the lights on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There we go. What you got? Oh, just took yeah. it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Over the old dog box. He's a skinny guy to do it. <laughs> Ouch! He <laughs> 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 can barely reach it. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Um, I'm Jay Diener with the Hampton Conservation Commission, and this is Nathan Page, who is filling in for Rayanne as our conservation coordinator. And we're here to talk about impervious surface. Um, and the reason we're here to talk about impervious surface surfaces is because there is a flooding problem in the town of Hampton, um, and there are a lot of causes for the flooding in Hampton, but we believe and research has shown that, that the amount of impervious cover that we have is a significant contributor to that. So we're proposing two warrant articles that will help to address them. Um, impervious surface is any hard surface over which water will run rather than soak in. Um, Rainwater snow melt from the roofs um, is runs across impervious surface. It doesn't have a chance to infiltrate into the ground. How much impervious surface cover is too much? Mm. Um, at 10 percent, your water resources are protected. At anything above 10 percent, they begin to become impacted. Mm. At approximately 23-25% your water resources are degraded and, and you're in pretty significant trouble. When you exceed 10% of impervious surface cover the size and frequency of flooding increases, pollutant loads increase and that includes runoff um, from your driveways, uh, oil and other fluids from your cars, pesticides, fertilizers from your yard, bacteria from animal waste. 
uh, you have increased uh, shellfish diseases and beach closures, and we saw that in Northampton earlier this year with um, uh, pollution coming down Little River. Uh, you have stream channel erosion, degradation of aquatic habitat, um, and perhaps as importantly, if not more importantly, reduce groundwater recharge. Yeah. Where does Hampton fit into this? Since we started measuring in 1990, our, our water resources have been impacted. Um, since about 1993, we've gone from impacted to degraded. Um, and we are continuing to, to climb. The um, amount of impervious coverage we have has increased from 20% to currently about 30%, and that includes just uplands. It does not include the marsh. It does not include any of our wetlands. <coughs> the first warrant article we're proposing is a definition of impervious surface. Um, there is none in our current zoning ordinances. Um, we discussed this the last time we were here, um, and there was a concern about how to deal with gravel driveways, crust stone driveways. You didn't come to see me on the driveway. But I drove by and I walked by many times. Yeah. And, and, and I believe you, but that's one example. Of, of how a driveway handles things. And we yeah. needed something, we needed to find a definition that would cover <coughs> basically all eventualities. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. It's just that it rained. We haven't had much rain this year, but it rained, what, a couple of days or so ago. And within probably five to well, ten minutes. Well, he's not on your rain schedule. In, in about <laughs> five to ten minutes, the puddles <laughs> in the driveway just went right through. We, um, we were tasked by you folks to go to other resources in the state to find a definition that would work. And what we did was we went to the current Shoreland Water Quality Protection Act mm. and found their definition, which says, amongst other things, um, examples of impervious surfaces include but are not limited to roofs and unless designed to effectively absorb or infiltrate water, decks, patios, mm and paved gravel or crust-strung driveways, parking areas, and walkways. Yeah. That is the only definition for impervious surfaces we found in all of the RSAs. Huh. Um, <coughs> but I think that does a pretty decent job of addressing the issue of whether or not crust stone and um, gravel driveways mm -hmm. can be considered impervious or not. Um, so I hope, I hope you're in agreement with that. So we're now including gravel and crushed stone driveways are now impervious. Unless they were designed. Unless they're designed. Unless they're designed. Water. Unless they're designed. Okay. With some sort of under structure or drainage yeah. system. Right. Okay. Reasonable. Thank you. No, I agree with that. I used to argue <laughs> that gravel driveways were impervious a long time ago, but engineers that sat at the same table you were sitting at would argue mm. that they are pervious. Mm. Yep. But as time and the fines go tighter and tighter and tighter, mm -mm. it becomes less and less and less and less and less and less pervious. Mm -mm. And I think that's why this qualifier they is do. really important and really makes a distinctive difference. Can I ask a question about roofs? We're seeing more roof gardens. How, how does that get treated in something oh. like this? I mean, you know, you make exceptions for a whole series of things, but I guess you could include a roof in that if you, if you have a form of treatment, I guess. And, and that's exactly how a roof garden would would differentiate itself from a standard roof is because it does provide a form of treatment. So before the water hits the ground, before the, wo before the water comes off your roof and runs across your driveway and into a stream bed next to your house, it will have received some pretreatment if there is a roof garden. Yeah, we have one. There's one that we down off Gookin Court, um, off Kings Highway, that went in about four years ago, as a, um, a, a, a to, to allow them to build further into the setback. They put in a roof garden. Uh, it's not. It's, off the, it's the last road there. You're going by Gookin Court. Yeah, it's the last yeah. road that goes across there. And the um, I can't remember the name of it right now. But I remember they put Which up a way? roof garden. 
No, that's before that. When you go in off King's Island, the first one, which goes down to... Uh, talking about rain? Rain? Garden? Yeah, they put a rain... Uh, no, a roof... A rain garden... Uh, a, um, a, uh, no, they were they were going to... A vegetated roof. Right. Not the, not the whole roof, but a couple of sections of the roof. Mm -hmm. So the... Gonna vegetate. So the section of the roof that has the garden will have some kind of a pipe or something coming through it, so the mm -hmm. soil will... Eventually it would drain, drain and then it yeah. would go down and... Yeah. Okay. Hmm. It would do some absorbing first, yeah. and then it would drain. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be... They're, they're interesting well structures, but I don't think they're happen. really all that common it's gonna in, yeah. in this area. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen many of them. No, but I, th I think we'll yeah. probably see more in the future. Sure. You know, before we revisit this. <laughs> but if they put yeah. fertilizer in the roof garden... <laughs> well, I'm serious. Yeah. You, you're planting plants. To your point, Jay. <coughs> right. We. Yes. We done. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, is this a public hearing? Yes. 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 So, does anybody of the public want to speak on it? Well, no. I just didn't want to get hung up on roof, roof gardens. gardens. Yeah. Uh. That wasn't really part of it. <laughs> Okay, so so this definition is is one article that we would like to put forward. Okay, um, we feel it's it's appropriate that there be a definition of impervious surfaces mm -hmm. in our town ordinances. Yeah, good. Exactly. Um, it's like hot top. We also wanted to look at how Hampton stacks up, mm -hmm. if you will, against other communities along the seacoast as far as impervious surface coverage is concerned. Our aquifer protection zone allows 60% coverage for industrial or business and 25% for residential. Mm -hmm. And if you look down the chart of other communities that have an aquifer protection zone, um, we're higher than all of them. And I, I believe that most of them don't differentiate between residential and, and other zones. So if you can see the range is from 10 to 35%. If you look at residential zones, um, residential coverage, we are again higher than all of the other communities mm -hmm. that have impervious coverage limitations for their residential zones. There the range goes from 15% to 75%. Yeah. If you look at commercial and residential, again we're at 85%. We are higher than all of the communities except for Durham, which has a range from 50 to 100%. Exeter, which goes from 85 to 95 percent, and Portsmouth, which goes from 70 to 100 percent. Hmm. The range for the other communities is from 35 percent to 75 percent. How do they differentiate in the the 70 to 100 percent or <coughs> 85 to 95? Is that by different overlays in there? I believe it is. Industrial, or is one for commercial and one for industrial? Uh, I don't know exactly. It is broken down by, by overlay zones. I would think ASBIL would have to figure in on that too, right? Because what if it's already existing, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, we didn't look at when these limitations came into to Right, date. but I'm just saying, I mean, so if they're already built does. out. Sure. Most of those communities have two acre minimums too. Yes. They don't have but 50 by 100 lots. Right. And a lot more land mass. Exeter and Durham, at least Exeter, is substantially bigger than Hampton. Mm -hmm. So, they, yep. We have less uplands. They have less? We have less uplands. We have less. Yeah. And, and our uplands are already pretty well developed. Yeah. We also wanted to take a look at, in Hampton, impervious coverage uh, by zoning district. Uh, um, because when we first talked about this last year, one of the concerns was that we were going to be creating a huge hardship for people in, in some of our zones in, in the mm -hmm. town. So we looked at a representative sample of lots in each of the zones. And if you look at the primary structures in all zones, we're well within even the 85% per percentage and well within what we're proposing um, with all but the BS non-residential zone. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's at a high of 62, yeah. roughly 62 and a half percent. Hmm. If you look at accessory structures, and, and we define them as decks, porches, entryways, patios, driveways, walkways, um, there alone, they are also well below the standard. Huh. When you look at total impervious coverage, there's really 
two zones that exceed what we allow now, which is 85%, and those are RB non-residential at 94.6 and BS non-residential at 90.2. Mm. Everybody else is comfortably within yeah. our current allowable percentage. So this shouldn't make a drastic difference in... in it is going to make a, a difference. Most of in most cases, we don't believe it's going to make a drastic difference. Okay. So now we sort of get to the meat of the matter, which is our proposed new standard for impervious surface coverage in, in hand. Right. Hmm. And what we are looking to do <coughs> is in all of the residential and general zones, including but not limited to RA, RB, RAA, RCS, GI, and POR, and AE, mm -hmm from 85% to 60%. And we chose 60% because it is the current high standard in our aquifer protection zone. Okay. And it seems a reasonable standard for the town. We, um, we talked to some people who were involved in setting the original standard, 85%. Mm -hmm. And to the best of their recollection, there was no science behind that number. It seemed like a reasonable number at the time. <laughs> um, so we wanted to have more, a little bit more of a rationale for choosing the, the number that we're proposing that we go with now. Yeah. In all of Hampton's business zones, we're looking for a reduction in the permitted amount of impervious coverage from 85% to 75%. We realized that it's unreasonable to ask for the same amount of reduction um, in those zones as we are in, mm -hmm. in the residential and other general zones. Yeah. How does this work? Um, these standards would apply to all new construction. Um, it would apply to redevelopment with the following exceptions. Number one, all currently developed lots are grandfathered. This only comes into play when they want to redevelop their lots. Yeah. If the amount of redevelopment includes less than 40% of the current impervious cover, in other words, if they've got 100 square feet of impervious cover on their lot and their redevelopment proposal includes 40 square feet or less, then they don't have to adhere to the new standard as long as they don't exceed the amount of impervious coverage that they've got. So if they're, if they're currently at 85%, if their redevelopment does not include the whole property, if it includes roughly 40%, then they can keep their impervious coverage. If their redevelopment includes more than 40% of their current impervious cover, then they have some choices. Um, they can meet the new standard, Mm -hmm. or they can put in a system like the Defender system that will enable them to manage their stormwater on site. And if they can do that, then they can maintain their current level of impervious cover. Good. That's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You kind of think so. And their third option, if neither one of those will work, is they can always go to the zoning board and ask for a variance. Mm -hmm. They can use them. Previous pavers or previous permeable asphalt and other things too, yeah. that would be considered a sealed surface. Can we go back to the chart that showed the percentages current <coughs> of your audit, which is this one? Yeah, and that was your audit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So when we go to an RA zone, which is a popular residential part of the community. Yeah. That's your, your Glen Hills, your um, presidential circle, et cetera. We're, our, we're pushing 60% there now. Right. So, so on if they so put an outbuilding or add a garage, they're going to need to get a uh, variance. If they're at 60%, they are not going to need a variance. If they are at 60% of impervious coverage now. 60.1%. Let's say if they go to 60.1%. Mm -hmm. I'm reading across there, RA, right. primary building, accessories, and we're coming up to like a swimming pool is impervious. 
So you're up to 59.18% uh, average. Right. Yeah. Okay. And they're going to 60%, correct? Correct. So our average home is already pushing yeah. the 60% thing. So mm -hmm. it's going to be tough for people to maybe an outbuild. I'm, I'm being devil's advocate here because I may be one with an outbuilding that needs <laughs> to add on a garage or something. Um, then <coughs> maybe. going to cause a lot of very, uh, I mean, uh, how's the building department going to enforce that? I'm just seeing it's, it's pushing, it's pushing it now. Hmm? You lost. We are pushing 60% now in yeah. the RA zone. Yeah. I see we're going to cause problems there with a lot of people needing changes because this is just your audit. It's not the real, it's not the assessment of the whole community, 100% of the community. We're going to cause a lot more problems if we keep letting people fill in and make impervious improvements to their property. That's I, why I think, we're I doing think, this. Okay. Keep it, I, I imagine some people would consider that debatable. My point is, is we're bringing on an area that's going to cause a lot of people to have to have their lots surveyed to prove that they can <coughs> um, increase their, their impervious surface. I, I'm just... I'm trying to look at it from a homeowner. Sure. You know, Joe and Mary Sixpack don't have a lot of money, but they've saved up to add the garage on. Well, look at um, the RV zones. See, that's even worse. You've got mm -hmm. 70, 94. Yeah. I was going where most people live, which would be well, uh, still a lot of RV. We do it. Yeah. But, it, but Keith, it shouldn't be that difficult for them to calculate the amount of impervious right. coverage they've got on their own lot. Hmm and to make a determination as to how close they are to the threshold. Yeah. You know what he's saying? This is the average. Yeah. Right? It's I get that. When you but go it's the average of what he took as an audit. Right. I understand. It may, it may cause people to, if they're close to the threshold currently and they want to add a structure, a shed, to the yard, to maybe consider turning a deck into you know, or a patio into porous papers, something mm -hmm. porous, yeah. or maybe a portion of their driveway, or maybe the walkway that goes up to yeah. the front of their house, or maybe yeah. adding in a rain garden. Yeah, because the there are there are a lot of different ways that it can be mitigate. Yeah, yeah. Are we going to? But vote? I'm thinking on the same on yeah, the same thought process. Yeah. RB has already blasted through the yes the, yeah. the yeah. situation. I mean, it, so they're going to go on for yeah. variances like crazy. Well. Yeah. Or they're going to change their properties. Yeah. I think it's probably cheaper to get a lawyer into a variance than it is to re-engineer your, re site. your site. I mean, because a, a, a water defender costs probably a couple grand to install mm -hmm. if you don't have the, in the engineering on top of it. So mm -hmm. I'm, do, I'm being devil's advocate here. This is... Um, you know, you've highlighted the primary building, but if people saw the total impervious in the zone they live in... Um, I think it's a little nerve-wracking oh. if you're a homeowner. Probably have to do a little no. Or if you're the guy, yeah. if yeah. you're the guy living next to Joe and Mary's six-pack, you you're counting your blessings that someone cares enough to not let them go yes. any further than they've gone. They've yeah. already gone too far, so yeah. you got to right. reel them in. Yeah. You, just because they own it, and you don't just keep letting it go and go and go. That's yeah. why it's a problem. That's why Some you people worry about their neighbors that way. Others say, well. I, w I may want to do it too. <laughs> and, and they can both get an attorney. Yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Well, are we going to vote to approve both of these to go in the warrant? Is that what we're doing tonight? Uh, we at that point. One at a time, though. We could. Yeah. Or be substantially amended. It would have to go for another. Mark. Yeah. So, second no, public this, hearing. This looks good. Well, one one thing I, I would bring up this that, that, that this is, is in contradiction to this. The sub the sub zone uh, sub business zone <laughs> the BSS sub whatever we're calling Jack it. Be, uh, that one moved to ten percent. Addressing that later. But that's encouraging it in a concentrated area where yeah. it's urban. Yeah, it's an this urban contradicts this. I mean, what, so well, one's yeah, this is going to have to exclude. This is going to have to exclude the BSS or the BS sub district. Right. Sub district. Right. Well, this one is a specific. No, you're, no. you've got the town no. center. I do have the town center. center. Yeah. The town yeah, center right. boosts to ninety percent coverage. Yeah. Right. And and with all due respect, if I may address that. Sure. Um, I think it's a. I understand the rationale behind that. Uh, asking for the ninety percent coverage. I think it does a disservice to the town to incorporate that ninety percent coverage, for a couple of reasons. Um, 
number one, if you do it in one zone, then you're going to have people in another zone yeah. coming and saying, well, what about me? Um, because I deserve it too. So you, you're going to open that can of worms. Secondly, I think we've created a number of different ways that people can work with the allowable percentage of coverage um, to make it to make it happen, to let them do what they want on their property and still meet the our recommended standard or to go get a variance. We're not saying you absolutely have to do this and you have absolutely no other choices. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I don't think it's in the best interest of the town to give an exception. Good. Mark. I, you know, I applaud the work. You, this is two years of work that you guys have put and I know that. And you, you worked hard to, to do this and you're, you're dedicated and everything else. But when we're talking about these districts, the people that own these properties, I would say 90% of them don't know what they have for impervious on, this, <laughs> on their lots, right? Because yeah. why, why would they be concerned? If I went in and bought a house, and it, and it's, never, it's never brought up that. I got 60% or 70% impervious on my lot. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly so what you're saying, but unless they want to do something different on their lot, it right, doesn't matter. Exactly, it doesn't matter. Exactly. But yeah. I'm just saying, as yeah. a you know, as a homeowner, probably 90% don't know what yeah. their impervious yeah. surfaces bet, on their I'll house. I'll bet it's higher than 90%. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Right. Um, that's just a point I'm bringing up. Yeah, that's yeah right. no, that's a valid point. But like I said, unless yeah. somebody's looking to redevelop, they don't I, have to I, be concerned with I agree with totally it. what we're trying to do. You're accepting a motion to yeah. approve well, the we're not ready. I, I want to make right. sure that they've satisfied. Oh, yeah. Have you right. presented all the information you'd like to share? Not right. quite, right? Um, I presented all the information. I think basically, yes. We have a chart that shows how this will play out. But I think I think you all understand yes. 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 how this works. Yeah. So. So yes, uh, I'll be happy to answer, and Nathan will be happy to answer any questions that you have. But so I think you you've got already. So did you choose 65 percent? I'm sorry. How did you choose 65 percent? We didn't. Six, well, 60, 75. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Sorry, kids. I was going to ask statewide to be 75, and they're a kind, a kind of a community like we are. Uh, we we based it on the percentage allowable in our aqua, aquifer protection zone for yeah. businesses. Mm -hmm. It seems like a reasonable percentage, and it seems like a good benchmark and a good target for the town. Can you look at the Are you growing anxious? Yes. Well, I mean, it's, we're doing <laughs> well, the same thing. Well, because she's in agreement oh. with this. No, Mary Louise is anxious to but push But we're doing it. the same thing over oh. and over again. I mean, we've seen no, all the information. But yes, we're we talking are. about it. Right. You look at the um, community oven project. Uh, for we the, um, had the printouts. At the north end of town, where that was in the aquifer protection zone, they put that storm defender system in, mm -hmm. and how wonderful that works up there. It really does a great job relieving the um, certainly uh, s the flooding in that area for th that property can they contain their runoff in their property you go out of town you go up to Greenland at Target and they got the um, permeable pavement up there mm. and you go up there on a rainy day and you watch the water come sheeting across the regular asphalt hit the permeable it's gone there's mm. no puddling yeah. nothing and, you know, and there's there are systems out there to allow this to work we are looking at um, when you, there are places in town that look down at the beach where we're going to build right, they're going to have structures right wall to wall, right up to the, and that's the, that's the nature of the animal down there. But yeah. do we need that downtown as well? Do we need that everywhere in town? And part of our setback system was to help allow for drainage as well. Oh, well, Mitchell's, Mitchell's contained all their water. Yeah, they're doing it. They're doing it all. They had the storm. Uh, I don't right. want to quote a brand, but they have, I think they have a storm defender system there. Yeah. It was expertly installed, I heard. But the, uh, so <laughs> don't, don't, don't forget that, that we get a lot of rainfall here. Yeah. We get a lot of snowfall, and that water has to go someplace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we don't allow it adequate <coughs> room to infiltrate, mm -hmm. it's just going to run, stay on on the surface. Yeah. It's going to flood our town. Well, it's going to it's going to impact our water quality. Uh, the spirit of moving this along. Yes. Well, I'm going to bring it back to the board. <coughs> I, I just caution the, the promoters or the advocates of this that if people see that and they're in a district where they're over and are approaching <coughs> sixty percent, they're more than likely not going to support this because they're afraid that it's going to really impact them. I'm just I'm just mm -hmm. saying that this is it's 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 a, it's a big change. 
um, and like you said, 90% of the people don't know what they mm. have, so they, they may think they fall into this, and it's like, oh my God, if I put a shit <coughs> So, I mean, I know there are probably people sitting here at the board that get angry that I play devil's advocate, but there are people at home that are thinking these things, and you're only highlighting the primary building, not the total, so it doesn't show that the total is really what we're trying to whittle down or, or to, to contain. <coughs> um, so there are a lot of the totals that are over 60% up there. A lot of the totals over 75% up there. I bet I'm over 60%. Well, deal with it. Well, <laughs> 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 that makes sense. Your grandfather did. <laughs> you get a different <laughs> 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 model. We, un we understand that. <laughs> It's going to be a challenge to educate the people in Hampton to exactly what we want to do, to have them understand what the impacts are, and have them understand the importance of this. We understand that. And right. we've got some time to do it, and we're going to be working on that, assuming that we get this move to go forward between now and town meeting. Very good. You know, as you talk I, can about I can see every uh, building permit for an outbuilding is now going to have to have a schedule of permeable surface. I mean, it's going to be amateur measurements, but this hmm. building department is going to send you away to say, you know, tell me what your coverage is. Hmm. It shouldn't be it's too hard to figure. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's kind of like wetland setbacks now. All of a sudden, we've got a whole new category of go figure it out. Right, and they're well, actually look at that driveway even, even this is easier to figure <laughs> out than wetland setbacks. Oh, I know. You don't have to no, bring an engineer in, you have to have a ruler. <laughs> the building department is going to have another another form. As we also look at plans that come before your board, come before our board, uh, to make complaints from neighbors, how many people, they don't even know where their lot line is because they get yeah. their sheds on the neighbor's land yeah. um, or on town property or so forth. So that's, that's, they don't, they, they, yes, they probably don't know what their percentage of sealed surface is, but they don't know, where their a lot of them don't know where their property lines are either. And, so and it's, it's, you, can't, you can't dumb it down to the lowest common denominator. And Decks are always a sketchy area, too, because you guys often recommend the decks be up a certain amount of height to let sunlight in, water infiltration. Now, that contradicts, is that deck now a impervious surface if it was built according to how you wanted it up higher and that sunlight could come in? Mm -hmm. Or is it, you know, straight down from shooting down from the sky um, overlooking D the property. D uh, DES says if it's over six feet off the ground, it's mm -hmm. not a permeable surface. Oh, really? There, there are also... Well, we're calling decks on the previous one, we're calling them decks. We're not saying decks are higher than six feet or below yeah. uh, under six feet height. You're saying under six uh, feet I'm just not permeable mm -hmm. above six feet? According to DES. I think it's the other way around. The other way around. Yeah, over six feet <coughs> is, is permeable. Right. Yeah. permeable. And, and there is also now, and there's a property out on uh, Badcock that, that installed it permeable decking material. So you can put a deck in two feet off the ground and you can still have vegetation oh, grow underneath neat. it. Yeah. So there are solutions. Okay. All right, <laughs> board. Um, if there's no more questions or comments, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this? Yes. Please. Good evening. I was watching at home and I, I heard that uh, gravel is not um, permeable. Could you introduce yourself, I please, Jones. for our uh, secretary? Yeah. Citizen Jones, 16 Dustin Avenue. Mr. Jones? Yes. So I was watching at home and I heard yes, that. Yes, sir. Uh, and so by definition, gravel the shoreline services are not permeable the shoreline because. <coughs> Calls out, what is that? Oh, I don't yes. care who said it. I'm sure. I'm saying <laughs> the basis of your decision is being made on this assertion that gravel surfaces are not permeable <coughs> because over time they become compacted and therefore the permeability diminishes to a point of apparently zero. That's the argument. But would that not be true of dirt as well? Mm -hmm. When dirt is dirt. sufficiently <laughs> compacted, it too becomes impermeable, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So how do we make dirt illegal? <laughs> Are we going by what the state standard is? The state I, 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 no, that wasn't my I question. Mean, gravel's used as a drive path or a parking path. Is that? <coughs> so a dirt parking spot would not be acceptable. How do you define dirt? Well, that's my point. 
Well, I would say it would probably be. Gravel has a definition. If it was compacted by driving on it. Well, by whatever means. It doesn't matter. A certain amount of time. No. Then it would be compacted, and it probably it would probably turn impervious. No. Yeah. Yes, it would. Yeah, it would, turn it it would. Yeah. My house was built in 1903. The driveway's been there all that time, and the water <laughs> drains down. Right. But yours is but gravel, all <laughs> right? Well, yeah, well it's dirt with had pea stone on top. Right. Your so tires are probably in the same path constantly. And it drains when it rains. So then you're against this article. No, I'm not against the article, but I think it's a silly <laughs> definition <laughs> on the as far as the crushed stone is concerned. Now, right, so go ahead, sir. I understand the problem that we're that trying to address that is flooding. Is that correct? Right. Flooding yeah. throughout the town. Flooding, water quality issues. Right. Pollution. So, well, flooding. Flooding. Which delivers pollution theoretically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's flooding that's the problem is that we're trying well, to address. Well, it's, it's surface Excessive water. It's well, that's it's surface that's the only water. Thing it's runoff. Mm -hmm. It carries thing. pollution that doesn't have a chance to get filtered. Yeah. By natural. Well, subsurface water does not flood. By definition, it's something subsurface, so it's not considered a flood, right? So when I say we're talking about flooding, obviously I'm talking about surface water. Okay? Yeah. We're, we're in agreement on the terms. Yeah. Okay. So the problem is we're trying to address flooding throughout the town, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And this would be uh, a problem that needs to be shared throughout the town, wouldn't it? Correct. It's a problem that exists throughout the town. So therefore, all property in the town would be, of course, subjected to having to contribute to the solution. Yeah. Right? The residents mm -hmm. and the businesses shouldn't be separated in terms of giving special treatment. Because, mm -hmm. you know, rain that falls on a business doesn't behave differently than rain that falls on a residence. And you take that argument just a little bit further and recognize we have another property entity in town, and that's called government property, much of which is impermeable, mm -hmm. namely the roads. Should we make our roads permeable? I mean, they once were permeable, we're and that's when we didn't have any flooding problems back then in those days, right? Those were the good old days when we didn't have flooding problems, when the roads were dirt roads, not yet compacted. Well, I think, in all honesty, they probably had That's flooding funny. issues in those days as well. Oh, so this is a this is a condition of that's always been in existence as long as there's been humans in Hampton, then. Probably. Pretty much, when you reclaim land. Yeah. Mm. So the then nature. the problem is clearly humans. <coughs> Unfortunately, maybe yeah. that's what Mother Nature would say. I don't no, know. I don't <laughs> think animals <laughs> did it. Well, it's beavers. Oh, well, that's true. I guess it's sort of like if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's here to hear it, is there a sound? So of course there's a sound. A sound being defined by sound waves naturally is going right. to be a sound. Whether yeah. it's heard or not, it's still a sound. That's right. And just like whether rain falls on a business or on a residence, it's still rain. And if it doesn't permeate the surface, it's going to contribute to yeah. flooding, yeah. isn't it? And whether it falls on a government property or resident property, it's still that same drop of rain is going to be an equal contributor to the flooding problem, isn't it? So, but we're asking. Right. So, but why should why should we effect. why should we segregate by class and impose restrictions on the owner of the property based on the class of their property? <coughs> it doesn't make sense because nature doesn't care, does it? Those raindrops don't say, "Oh, I'm falling on a business, therefore I'm going to be." I'm going to make sure I penetrate the surface before I run away. <laughs> right? It doesn't do that. So what would your solution be? That's, what I, that's a million dollar question. Well, I haven't seen the definition of the problem enough to off actually offer a solution. Where is the flooding occurring? Is it occurring all over town? Yeah. <coughs> or is it occurring just in certain portions of town? No, but like we, we detonated people that have stormwater systems and contain their water in their runoffs on their property before mm -hmm. it mitigates to other sections. So it's treated. Well, I, I cannot I cannot repair or you know do anything about history of the past. Right? No, this, is, this, is a it. this is a proposal about going forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but how do you correct pr uh, past problems other than making adjustments to that? Mm -hmm. well. Well, we need to define the problem with more specificity. I haven't heard any 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 statements beyond that we have flooding throughout the town. Yeah. I have been, I've been here for, you know, quite a while. 
So I added up, like 17 years, something like that. Mm -hmm. I live at the beach where flooding is the worst. Yeah. Right? You live, you live I've never been, yeah, I've never been flooded. And I used to go skating on Dustin Avenue. Yeah. So it's it's because it never floods, right? It was filled and I'm two blocks. Well, in to build a condo mm -hmm. I'm the first public street off the harbor. Mm -hmm. So you would think I would be, like, you know, pretty subject yeah, to flooding. There was sand down there, too. It was all filled in. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, if you look at the properties, like mine, I'm, like, probably, well, that, that, that what, 90% uh, asphalt. That you know, I was going to tear it up Hopefully it's only and put down some trees and some grass. And then I heard the discussions about permeable surfaces. So you change your decision tonight based on this? No, not tonight. I heard this oh. th in the previous one. So I'm thinking, gee, if I tear it up, then I'm actually causing myself some harm, aren't I? Because later if I want to, like, enclose my deck, and I, I can come in and say, well, I'll enclose my deck, but that's going to create, a, you know, an impermeable, impermeable surface. But I can alleviate that by taking up the asphalt I was going to take up to put trees by doing it as I make the proposal for the deck. So it delays my decision to put in my trees and so forth. All right. Now, how long is that delay? I don't know. Well, you save a lot of money by doing it all at once. Not if I'm doing it myself, which I like to do things myself. Mm -hmm. Well, it also depends on the amount of impervious coverage you've got on your lot. If you take out your driveway and put in trees, you may already be reducing the amount to below the standard. Well, that's my point, but if I take out the trees first, okay, right now I'm at 90% asphalt, maybe 100% asphalt. Well, it's actually 90%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a front yard full of seagrass. No, seagrass is far more absorbent than regular grass, right? So do I get credit for having seagrass versus regular grass? So you <laughs> <laughs> do I do I get do I lose credit by taking up some of the asphalt, say, in my backyard and in my side yard along my driveway by putting in uh, trees and, and grass now, and then later when I come in to say a deck and they say, "Whoa, wait a minute, you're you're still at seventy percent permeable," and I say, "Well, I was ninety percent before I before I did this," and well, yeah, we can't think about that because that's not part of the proposal now with your deck. <coughs> <coughs> there are all kinds of unintended consequences going on here. I'm only speaking about my property, and I'm only one. Okay, there are many such properties out there with many different very. I mean, you guys know this. There are many nuances at play here, and I'm simply pointing out that what I'm seeing here is, uh, you know, government saying that, uh, well, you know, we have a problem, and we're going to impose essentially a tax. It's not a monetary tax, but it's a pro it's a tax on my property. You're restricting my property rights to solve but a town-wide problem. Uh, what about your 90% that you inherited when you purchased the property, uh -huh. and it's, it's runoff because you aren't managing water, your water that falls, the molecule water that falls on your piece of property. You're not managing it as well. I'm just playing devil's advocate. I'm not. You're right. Um, you're forcing a hardship on your abutting property because you are not handling your water on your property in a responsible way. I'm not saying you particularly, but some with that much sealed surface. Well, that's the beauty of it. You see, my asphalt and my property line, based on planning and zoning of the past, has it run right up into the uh, next guy's uh, <laughs> building. So <You're> funny. <laughs> it's, it's not a problem. I mean, my neighbor actually appreciates it. If I say grass, he might, he might get mad because it's kind of puddle. <laughs> what a line. Case in point. Well, it's the truth. Case in point, though, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think... I, I don't think this is big government, and here I am arguing the other I side. Didn't I, say, I didn't say big government. I simply said government. government. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess there's really the no big government or little relevant. government. Um, I like little government, don't you? Right. <laughs> but but what, what's the right thing to do? As a well, citizen of the earth, what is the right thing to do? The citizen of earth? Yeah. I mean, wow. you, you've got to be responsible for yourself and your property. It's just, just, an, uh, just for pop, pop it, backing it. I may be. Talk to you. I, w I would yield that I'm an Earthling, but whether I'm a citizen of Earth is another question. I'm a uh, citizen I of the town of Hampton. Well, argue semantics. You know well, what I meant. <laughs> for the public, I want to be clear that you, there is no such thing in my mind as a citizen of the Earth. But you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, God bless. The first thing, the first most important thing uh, to always take in mind, I think, when you're talking about. Uh, well, should we take it on the personal level or the government level? You, you're the one that probably... I'll take it at both then. Yeah. I would say, you know, for me personally, on a personal level, uh, it's, it's really the same as on a government level, except that the considerations are larger. Mm -hmm. 
on a personal level, uh, as well as a government level, the basic theme is is the Hippocratic Oath: do no harm. Okay. Right. And what I'm seeing proposed here is harmful. So I'm saying, let's not do that. Let's not do what we can easily foresee is harmful. And it's really not solving the problem. The previous presentation that Jay made at, I believe, a previous planning meeting I saw on TV, he actually said that this is not going to solve the problem. I it's going to right. alleviate it to some percentage. The problem's not going to go away. So even this proposal <coughs> doesn't solve the problem. But what it does create is other problems, some of which I have spoke about tonight, some of which are just not thought, and we haven't thought about it yet. Right. But they'll, they'll come up, and you'll have people up here complaining about it, and they're all going to be thinking the same thing that you were thinking, even though I didn't say it. Big government taking my property rights. If, if you really insist on putting these proposals there, there are two Warren articles, right? Mm -hmm. One for resident. One for business. Like no, no. Oh. Definition. Oh. One for definition. Just a definition. One for definition. Just a definition on the Warren article? Yes. Sir. There's no. Different percentages for. The last meeting I heard him, he actually pr pr presented two proposed Warren articles that were actually. Yeah, there is two. I don't have my glasses. I ran down here too damn quick. <laughs> She'll take it home with him. Yeah. We're, oh, we're thank you. I appreciate the that. the definition of impervious, and then we're, yeah. I don't want to say further restricting, but. Yeah. Further creating new standards. Creating reducing. New standards. The Is there one about percentage. creating Wouldn't new standards? Well, the second yes. page. Those new standards. Those new standards are um, basically Reduce the percentages. Right. Well, that's what I'm. That's that is in fact a property restriction. So. It all is. It's a, it's a reduction in my property rights. And so those are the two, because you presented them at the at a previous town uh, planning board meeting. I saw that, <coughs> and. Uh, I was incited, but I was also totally incapable of coming so down here. At the so, the solution is to do nothing. Mm. Isn't it all zoning? No, 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 no. You see, I, I'm going to die. Oh, me too. Right. I'll join so. the club. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost there. We'll check your oh, what's, what's, what's the solution? Well, that's, I'm asking you. Well, uh, I'm, yes, not, first. I'm not going to do anything about it except accept the reality of it and try to do the best I can to. to uh, uh, Within the limits of the law, right? No, I'll work within the limits of nature. Well, should should we do nothing? Let me ask you that. Should we do nothing? No, I think you should. I think you should uh, define the problem well, and then, like any good government body, restrict your solution to address that problem itself, not to have a broad-based problem for a uh, broad-based solution for a narrow problem. If we have a few streets flooding, then let's come up with let's craft a solution that solves that problem, that narrow problem. We don't need to go town-wide to well, solve a, a, what is, in my mind, a narrow problem. Like I mentioned a little while ago. This is not a solution, in my opinion. I don't understand if you know the dedication of the Conservation Commission in this town and the two years that they've researched this and, and gone through stuff to address the problem townwide and to come up to some equitable solution. I mean, these people have dedicated many, many, many hours. Uh -huh. So what's your point? My point is, point is, is because they spend a great deal of time and effort and work and produce the product that's going to cause harm, we should do it anyway because they did a lot of hard work. I don't get it. I don't. I don't see the um, total harm that you're talking about. Well, I just defined it in my my specific yeah, instance, I understand what you're and saying. I also defined it in the broader instance in saying that we've got a generalized problem of flooding throughout the town, and you want to propose uh, that we have a generalized flood. And I don't see that generalized flooding throughout the town. I see there are very narrow areas of town that are subjected to flooding. So, first of all, the problem definition it really isn't. doesn't seem it really to fit isn't. with my perception of it what's really going isn't. on. It, is, it really isn't. Just my street is. doesn't flood. Well, your your street doesn't flood. But yet you're going to regulate me. But you can go... Yeah. Right. Okay. In fairness to all the public, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, if you have other points you'd like to make, we're certainly open to listening to them. But I think the points have all been made and, and mm -hmm. duly noted. I don't know. And that's what the ballot box is for. Right? Oh, yeah, I, mean, I know that. We that's what public hearing is for, to let you know my thoughts. And that's, that's what I'm doing, is, is just that. I, I don't mean to be uh, 
provocative. Uh, sure you do. I think you do. <laughs> well, thought-provoking, perhaps. Thought yes. Provoking. Okay. I don't mean to be getting uh, uh, you know people's emotions involved. I'd rather have their cerebral activity than than their emotions. Because the truth is, is that we have not a broad-based pr flooding problem yeah, we in do. this, in we this do. town. We do. Excuse me. My street does not flood. Well, your street does My street flood. is part of the town. We have flooding up on Exeter Town Line. We have flooding yeah. up on Tide Mill Road. Yeah. We have flooding down on North Those Beach. Those are areas. Yes. Are Just because, because your place doesn't flood <coughs> doesn't mean yeah. the town doesn't have problems. Yeah. Well, I didn't say the town didn't have problems. See, this is, this is we're comparing apples and oranges here, sir. Well, we're not just going to exclude well, Dustin Avenue. It's, it's all over town, Tim. Well, it's all yeah, who's no, to say well, that no. the runoff from Dustin Avenue is it's all over town. Yes, it is. Lower than Problems that. all over town with flooding. You you say if if I may, the, the issue is that the done. source of the Good. flooding is not necessarily <laughs> at the location of the flooding. So you may have flooding, for example, down at the end of High Street. That water doesn't all just come from High Street. It comes from a variety of different other areas mm -hmm. where there is too much impervious surface so that water yeah. is running off and it all winds up at High Street. So mm -hmm. that's at Route 1. Yeah. Yeah. Running this and where it is, where no, it no, is. His, his point is very valid. Of and I want to address it because it's a very valid point. Because it's running down a street. I didn't a say a street. It's, it's running across all kinds of impervious surfaces, meaning driveways, roofs, yeah. sidewalks, patios. Right, well, but well the fact that you're, you're, you're flooding on High Street well, is coming area, from... High Street area. Street area. It's, it's coming, it's it's coming from someplace. It's driveways that are flooding. Yeah, it's coming yeah. from someplace. And, and it's coming primarily mm -hmm. down roadways because they're natural canals when it comes to you know, heavy rains. It certainly is seeking the lowest elevation to flow. Yeah, yeah and that would... Okay. Yeah. So so that, that's, that's again, yeah. government property. So I just wanted I to point out that... We appreciate that. So what you're saying is we need a drainage system and a treatment system that, 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 drainage. that could be, you know, something that, that seems to solve the issue. Um, it's it would certainly contribute to help solving the issue. It's a solution that's point-specific to the problem, certainly. And so, you know, I would see that more favorably, absolutely. Um, also, again, as I said earlier, you know, gravel not being pervy, which just strikes me as, you know, yeah, nonsensical silly. because yeah. not only because Mary Louise really is permeable <laughs> but also because I know that dirt really or, or any anything else cons constituted mm -hmm. as earth yeah. is subject to compacting just as easily or just as much as it's gravel is uh, so you know I don't see the distinction there well we're talking about uh, I, I believe it's paved gravel or crushed stone driveways parking areas walkways not Loose gravel in a gravel pit. Well, it's always going to. I'll let it go. Good. I'll always be concerned <laughs> about the composition of what you uh, what you have uh, there. Right. We discussed gravel okay. and all of its issues. Glory, yes. uh, do you have other concerns yes, I do. around this yes, matter? Yes, I do. As I pointed out, I'm also concerned about you know you know uh, treating different classes of property differently, even though uh, nature's raindrops cannot distinguish one class of property from another. And um, also on the proposed Warren article, which I can barely read because I don't have my glasses, but I did read them from the previous meeting. I, I think that we uh, would all be well served by an informed citizenry. I'm sure everyone agrees with, agrees with that. <coughs> and relative to the wording on this, I think the citizenry, when it reads it, would be better informed, more accurately informed, if it were prefaced with something to the effect of do you favor further restricting your property rights? <laughs> yes. Dying it out. Because that's in fact the truth of what we're doing here. This this born article is going to restrict rights they presently have, and we ought to just say it right up front to them instead of you know wording it in such a way where we can trick them into also voting yes. I, I, I'm not sure that mm -hmm. the uh, law allows us to do that. The law does not allow you to speak the truth. I'm not sure. I'm trying, I'm but everyone keeps wanting to truth. debate mm -hmm. these things, mm -hmm. so it's not coming to I'm an end. I'm saying that that's a leading question, and I'm not sure how the law would allow us to yeah. propose that in that sense. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm saying that the wording that you use may not be allowable by law. Like I said, the word, something right. to the effect that actually conveys to the reader this one. that it is a restriction on what they presently have regarding their property rights. I understand. Yeah. Stop talking to him and maybe. Okay. That would be helpful. Well, you, what, well <laughs> Mark, I, go ahead, Mark. I'm happy to answer you. No, no. 
We certainly heard your opinion. We debated enough tonight, I think. I've made all the points I've made. You have Eddie, a question Eddie have made your points, okay. and I would suggest if you have any more um, suggestions that you write a letter to the editor, mm. right? Put it oh. in the afternoon. And oh, the hell right? with that. You'll hear me at the deluder session. That's fine. Sure. Thank you for Thank coming Thank you for you know, appreciate taking the time effort. and listening to me with I open minds. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. And, and I'm not... I don't have any prejudice. <laughs> Mark. I said thank you. Done. Hi, my name is Sonny Kravitz. I live in the Highlands. Same yes, here. A couple of points. The property is going to be grandfathered, so that's not an issue. But mm -hmm. the new owners might be, end up with non-conforming. Mm -hmm. They'll be lots. grandfathered as well. You know, they're the people that would have the problems. The reason I wanted to speak was I think you better correct that before Liberty that Lane, reality. Crossroads that's Realty. That's me. the largest. Excuse me. That, that's an incorrect statement. The grandfathering goes with the p land, not with the owner. Okay. It goes with the land, not with the owner. It's, uh, land rights go with the land. Yeah. So yeah. It doesn't matter. We don't care who owns yeah. the land. Yeah. Okay. So, so the property is grandfathered and you sell it. Make an addition. This yeah. is what I used to work for. If you sell it to somebody else, they get that same. Yeah. It doesn't okay. change right. with the ownership. As long as that's just like a zoning variance doesn't change the ownership. It only changes if you're making improvements or making changes to the actual yeah. property. No, it would follow the same rules. They would still follow the same rules as if they were the, if they were the original owner. Right. It doesn't matter who Mary, owns it. Mary Louise yes. is right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I don't have a problem with that. The reason I wanted to speak was because of Liberty Lane and Crossroads Realty. Right. There's 300 acres. Mm -hmm. Most of it's wetlands. Yes. 23 Falcone, when he wanted to put a houses there, it's total wetlands, yeah. but it's the only way he could get access to the 125 acres yeah. down towards yep. not Route 95. Yeah. He can't get by aquarium, but he bought number two Falcone, the house that's falling apart, and he gave them a life estate. He's still planning to try to get access yeah. to the property. I spoke w when he came before the Conservation Committee, Mr. Wells, remember? Sure. And yep. we met with him, and he said he's not going to do anything till 2015, and he wants to get the public input. Yeah. And we said we talked to him. We're waiting for the maps because to do with yeah. the neighborhood doesn't have the maps yeah. that he was presenting. But my big issue was. That's mostly wetlands. Oh, yes. When he wanted to put the multi units in the cross from the pond for that 10 acre region. site, we're, we're, we're that would have created a lot of impervious yeah. parking lots. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's not buildable for. He doesn't want to do single family there, mm -hmm. but that's his problem. Yeah. We're Sonny, we're yeah. just trying to get through this issue okay. of the right. cover. Uh, not I just came because I saw, it on the years from now. Yeah. I saw it down the bottom of the agenda. Yeah. That's fine. They will have plenty of opportunities still with again because yeah. I suspect he wants to develop it. Yeah. Boy, it's a tough one. Can you stand the motion to approve putting <laughs> Article is there 1 anyone, on the warrant? Is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak on this? Seeing none. If you're prepared to make the motion, then I guess we could consider it. I just it. did. May we put Article <laughs> 1 on the warrant? I'm motion moving. by Mary Louise. That's the definition. That's the definition. That's the definition yeah. you're talking about. Yes, sir. Article 1. Or don't we have to have a second public hearing? No, not if we don't change it. Not if we don't, don't change it. Okay. Yeah. I'm just... Who's alive here? Second? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm a little Bless groggy. <laughs> Second by Mark. I have a motion by Mary Louise. Fran. Just questions Please. on process so the people who are watching understand if we vote this or up or down, let's say up because down it, it's, it's moot at that point. Um, what's the process, Mark? Is, is this the way it's going to appear on the ballot? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. To the ballot. Yes. 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 That's the way you've written it, Jay, and you as a Conservation mm -hmm. Commission sees fit. Then this is the language. And right. you've talked to the town of Tony. This has been the legal we, planning board article. We, yes. We have not had the full town legal department review it. Um, the town attorney is out because of uh, death in the family, yeah. so he has not had a chance to look at this as a final look through yet. He looked at it. Uh, where there was a couple of editorial, uh, some editorial changes made, and he's prior to that he's reviewed it and was pleased with it. 
Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll be going over the Warren articles on Friday as a board anyway, and I'm sure that the attorney will, will do. Uh, further clarification, yeah, I believe planning board amendments cannot be, um, uh, articles cannot be Correct. amended at the deliberative session. Correct. People right. should understand that. Mm -hmm. They cannot be amended at the deliberative session. Right. So they appear the As way is. we approve them if we did that? Yes. Okay. That's all clarification. Just yeah. <laughs> I'm voting in favor. Well, he didn't call for a vote. Right. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Sorry, sorry, Chairman. Have you, have you, have you satisfied with your clarification? <laughs> yes. Okay, so. We're just talking about amendment number one. Right. Amendment and number so one. It was motioned by Mary Louise. Yeah. It was seconded by Mark. All in favor? To moving Aye. into the ballot. To moving into the ballot. Opposed? Are you awake? No. Oh, I got one opposition. Anyone abstain? Okay. Very good. So that brings us to I'll now move number two. Art warrant Article Two to be uh, presented as is on the warrant, except for any adjustments that Town Council might make. Uh, well, well, no, 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 this is the, these are the percentages okay. we're presenting. I don't care about the percentages. We, might have but we also don't want to no, have, no. Uh, well, whether I'm in favor or not, to have a loophole that throws it out, even though there's been a conscientious decision to vote for it or against it at the ballot. Just, nice. just after, you know, re co town council will, re will review it as a matter of course. So I'll move that article, warrant article two, which is the impervious surface reduction, be placed as stated on the warrant. Motion by Mary Louise. Second. Second Bless by you. Mark. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Oh. Another voice heard from. Get this. So we have. Did it get to four move three. forward? Four yeah. three. Yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Really do appreciate the effort. I think Mark has hit on it a number of times. Yeah. A lot of effort's gone into this. It is a big issue, regardless of how each of us feels. Um, I think it's, it's excellent. Turn off your TV, thanks Tim. Thanks for all your support. You're very welcome. Yeah, I shut off my mind, actually. Yeah. Jay, you will have printouts for the deliberative session you to bet. circulate to the public. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. okay.